Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Productronica 2019 on the Scoop Studio and I'm joined by Ross from India. Thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure to chat. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Always lots going on with you guys, but I really wanted to talk about what's challenging you from a from a, an industry point of view. We've got things coming, coming down the line like 5G um, that are really kind of making people think about what's on our technology roadmap. How do you get a grip with that and what have you got that's new that's tackling those challenges? So 5G is a big topic for us at Indium Corporation. If you were to take a walk across the show, you'd see our booth and that's a major theme for us. And that's because 5G needs new materials for thermal management, need new void, low voiding solder paste. They also have a componentry inside the 5G that needs our flip chip fluxes, our thermal interfaces, as well as our uh, uh, gold tin die attached for some of the gallium arsenide, gallium nitride trips. So there's a lot going on in the whole stack up for 5G. Yeah, and it, it is complicated. So when you look at that, and I think that's really interesting when I look at Indium, I always see them as, I guess, predominantly an engineering company. I see you as a, you know, your engineer to engineer communication is a key part. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the the um, the input to do that? Are you talking to the OEMs? Are you talking to the guys building the networks? The guys building the cell phones? Where 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 are you building out your roadmap? Yeah, well, it partially starts with our whole mindset. You said from one engineer to another is a key part of it, but the other is at Indium we believe material science changes the world. Okay. So we enter into the whole world with this material science attitude that we can help companies solve their problems by bringing great materials to bear. And so an interesting example of that is actually in the automotive space where we've been engaging with our customers on some of the IGBTs and as they assemble those they got some some issues with planarity and reliability and we have our new inform offering that is able to solve both of those problems and so it's a very high yield process with a vacuum solder assist and then it is able to uh, generate something that is two to three times better yield and reliability than what they've been getting in the past. Okay. So you've got 5G, you've got these challenges in the automotive industry what else is new? What else is challenging you at the moment? Well, one of the things we're most excited about is we just opened a new factory in India. The India marketplace is taking off. Of course, 5G is happening there, but also just cell phones and mobile communication is taking off in India. And so we're ready to support that market. And then if we go into China, of course, we have all the trade challenges that are going on. But the good thing for Indium is we have a very strong presence in China. We have a great uh, uh, footprint in Suzhou. And then we have our staff throughout China that are supporting our customers there. And it's been a little bit refreshing because we're becoming more China in China right now. And that's a great challenge for us, but uh, we're rising to that with some new investments actually in our R&D facility there. Okay, so R&D is now a global activity? Absolutely. We have R&D in the Utica, New York area. We also have R&D in our China facility and also in Chicago. Okay. And you, you, mentioned, you mentioned the tariff things and, you know, I think the rise of India isn't unconnected to the tariff things. Um, same with Vietnam, those kind of places. How do you assist your customers when they're concerned about that? Because, because what you're providing with them with is a, key, is a key part of their agility around the world. Well, fortunately, we have a, uh, over the years, we've always had an approach in our supply chain to have multiple sources for materials and uh, good relationships with partners, but also the ability to localize. So you take all that together, and we have a strong presence in Singapore that's supporting our China operation. And then we also, in China itself, we're a full self-service organization there. So in many ways, uh, the tariff has been less of an impact in our solder business. We do have some businesses in compounds and inorganic compounds that those are a little bit more challenging because it's harder to become localized with those products. Yeah, and it's exciting times, isn't it? I mean, I look at that challenge. I look at what's going on with Industry 4.0. I look at everything else that's going on in, in the industry. And I think 2020 is going to be a, a fascinating year. There's a there's a lot to look forward to and a lot to think about. Yeah, I'm very excited about 2020. We have a series of new products that are coming out. We have a new low temp offering, Durafuse, mm -hmm. which is a, a revolutionary product really in that it achieves the reliability of sac solder, but in a low temperature assembly uh, uh, capability. And then we also have uh, our, pres our inform that's coming in the IGBT space is just going to take off in the coming year. Yeah. And then let's hope Semiconductor has a better year. Yep. That's been our little bit of tough part of this, this 2019 and yeah. let's hope for a strong 2020 in the Semiconductor well, industry. Well, if we look at cycles in history, it looks like 2020 should be a strong yeah. year. Yeah. But it looks like an exciting year and I'm sure we'll get to speak again maybe at Apex in the spring. So look forward to that. Ross, thanks for stopping by. Pleasure to chat. Thank Great you. talking to you. Thank you.